everybody, it's Miss Sohami. So for today we are going to um, understand how a parabola moves on the graph based off of the numbers that change in their equation. So we call this uh, transformation. So a transformation is when it moves, whether it moves left, right, up, down, gets bigger, gets smaller. So that's what we're going to focus on today and see what numbers or in which spots do what. But to do that, I first want to go over the difference between standard form and vertex form. So we just went over standard form last time. We said the standard form of, of a quadratic formula, I'm sorry, of a quadratic equation is written in this form. That's the standard form. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So keep note of those letters. Now, the vertex form is if I weren't to multiply it out. So there's a different form, and it looks like this. y equals y equals, we still have that a term. Then in the parentheses, so in the parentheses, being squared is x minus h, and then we have plus k, where in this particular example, if, since it's vertex form, we can just pick out two numbers from here and we would know the vertex. So where the vertex of the parabola would be at the coordinate h comma k. Now notice, it says minus h. So if it said minus 2, my h is 2. If it said plus 7, it would be 7. If it said plus, now here's where it's the, you have to be careful. If this said x plus 7 squared, that really means x minus what number would make this plus? Minus a negative 7. So notice how your h value for your coordinate would change based on the sign that you see there. Okay, so inside the parentheses, it would always be the opposite of what you see here. So if it said minus, it would be a positive. If it says plus, it would be a negative. So keep that in mind. On the outside, it's not the opposite. Whatever it is, you just put it there. So that's important to keep in mind for later. So here, we want to know how does changing the value of a change the graph? So I'm going to graph for you the three different functions you see here. So now the three different functions you see here, this one is called the parent function because it's where the function starts. So it starts at a parent function here. x squared and I'm getting this right off the table. Looks something like this. I'm going to plot five points like this. So that's y equals x squared. Now if I were to put y equals 2x squared, let's see how that changes our graph. So let's say if I graph this one right here, I still have 0, 0. But now, so now look at this. It looks like, first of all, it's increasing a lot faster. and it looks like it's thinner. Now if I were to plot this one, 1 half x squared, and again I'm getting this right off of my calculator just so that I can graph it correctly. So if I go in and I get the three points from the table, it would look something like this. It'd be 0, Still zero, zero, a half, and then it says here, well, two. So 
Oops, and look at that and how it's wider. Okay. And one last one. I know it's not on here. I want to graph it. What if I had y equals negative x squared? So notice how the negative is in front. What would that look like? Now, if it was negative x squared, like a negative 1 was here, If you look, all that happens is that it gets flipped upside down. So it's really important that you note that difference so that when we're graphing it, or when you're trying to describe the change of a graph, you would know what it means. So as your a value increases, what happened? So here, when my a value in the front, a in front of the x squared, got bigger, the graph became narrower. It becomes now becomes narrow, thin. So I'll put here what I when I say narrow, I mean thinner. As a got decreased, then it got wider. It becomes wider or thicker. And then if A is negative, like the green one, the graph reflects over the x-axis or flips upside down. So, so far that's what you need to know. If the A term, this is focusing on the A term. Okay, in front of the x squared, right here. Okay. In this next section, I want to talk about what if the c term, or sometimes it's the k in vertex form. So look, in here it's c, over here it's k. What if that changes? So let's see what happens here. So I'm talking about this plus 3 or this minus 2. So let me try graphing the parent function. I'm going to try and be consistent and still graph it in red. So here's my parent function. It starts right here. And it's good to graph at least a few points. So here's my original graph. I'm trying to make it curved. Now I'm going to graph this one. Watch what happens. What happened to the graph? If C is positive, the graph moves up C units. Hmm, so you could probably take a guess what happens if, if it's a minus 2. I just put it in my calculator. So here it moves down C units. So if it's a plus three, it's going to go, every point is going to move up three points. If it's minus two, every point is going to go down two points. So that one is pretty basic. Notice it's on the outside. It's not changing the x squared. It's on the outside, so it changes the y. And then the last kind of change I want to discuss, if it's on the inside with the x, if it changes the x, so I want you to really pay attention here. We're going to try it one more time. And you might want to use your calculator before you assume what the graph will be. So here is my parent function. So now here, x minus 2. Y 
Whoa, which way did the graph go? Okay, it went to the right. This one went to the left. So it's really important you see that because now, if the h value, notice this is my h value, x minus h squared. That means my h equals 2. It goes to the right. The, the graph moves right h unit. If it was negative, which in this case, look at this, x minus what number? Negative 4 squared, right? So x minus h means that my h is a negative 4. It moves to the left. Now it's hard to really see that. So what I like to say is that just focus on what's inside. It does the opposite. So if it's minus 2, that means it goes to the right two, positive. If it's plus four, it does the opposite. It moves to the left four. That's only when it's inside with the x squared, being squared. So that's really what you have to know about moving the graph of a parabola or the function. So in order to do these kind of problems, you need to ask yourself, how can I graph them? This problem says without using the calculator. So I'm not going to use my calculator and I'm going to first describe the transformations. That's what it says here. It says describe the transformations so you can graph them. And it says you must plot and state three key points. So that's very, very important. So some of you might struggle with that. I want you to really focus on one more thing before you go. Notice, if I were to make a table for this parent function, the key coordinates that I get is the middle, two to the right, and then two to the left. So it would look something like this. I get negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Those are my key coordinates that I'm using. Now, when you just square it, 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, 0, 1, 4. So you could follow that pattern. That's the parent function. Now, notice what happened to the numbers if I had a 2 in front. They became double. So 4 became 8. This became a 2. This became 0. This becomes a 2. This becomes an 8. If I say half, I now have to do half of all these numbers. So really pay attention to that when you're graphing. I'm going to do a few examples with you. So maybe I'll just do, because I, I have a bunch of examples here. So I have six examples where I give you the, the equation and you have to graph. And then I give you six examples where I give you the graph and you have to write the equation. So I'm going to do a couple with you. I'm going to do two here with you and I'll do two down there with you. So the two that I'll do here with you will be numbers, I'm um, just trying to pick them real quick, numbers 1 and 6. I'll do them with you right now. Or actually not 1 and 6, I'm sorry. I'm going to do numbers 2 and 6. So let's like take a look at number 2. What's the only thing happening here that's different than y equals x squared? The only thing that stands out is this. Now, if you need to go back and take a look at the notes, this is inside with the x. So that's talking about this section right here, changing that h value. So if you remember, it does the opposite. If it's minus, it goes to the right. If it's plus, it goes to the left. So here, since it's minus, you could say this is going to go to the right, how many spaces? Three units. That's describing the change. So that's the first thing, describe the transformation. Then I'm going to make a graph. 
So now, instead of it being here, maybe I'll change the color for you. So instead of it being here, so I'm going to do this like this so that you see where this is the parent function. Now, where it should be is to the right three units, so it should be here. So some key coordinates here is the coordinate 1, 4, 2, 1, 3, 0, 4, 1, 5, 4. So that's what these points here are, these coordinates that I graphed. See? And that's how you can complete it. I described, I plot, I stated, and then I did the transformation. So I'm going to try number six. Again, I like to see this original one. You do not have to plot it unless it says you do. So I like to see it because I like to tell myself, hmm, well, how much has changed here? Okay, so a lot has changed. I have a negative. I have a three in front. I have a minus one. And I have a plus six. So now my coordinates have to be three times bigger. So instead of me going to the coordinate 1, 1, I need to go to the coordinate 1, 3. Instead of going to 2, 4, I need to go to 2, 12. But there is no 12 here. So the only ones I'll be able to probably plot are 1 to the left and 1 to the right. Okay, so keep that in mind. So what happens to this graph? Let's write it. So it's because of the negative, it reflects over the x-axis. So it's going to go upside down. Because of the 3, remember, if the number is bigger, it's going to get thinner or narrow. So the graph will be, oops, I can't fit that. narrow or thinner and then because of the negative one remember inside does the opposite so the opposite of negative is positive so it'll move to the right one unit and because of the plus six on the outside it does the same so this is going to move up six units Okay, so it's very important that you do that. And remember, you're not allowed to use your calculator, or maybe you shouldn't use your calculator, and then you'll check it when you're done, just so that you could really tell yourself, hmm, what's going to happen here? So the first point that I always, always graph is my turning point. So 1, 6, because I need to move to the right 1 and up 6. So 1, 6. Here's my turning point. Now, remember, it's going to reflect over the x-axis, meaning it's going to flip upside down. So it might, it's going to go like this. Whoops, that was a very bad picture. So it'll look like this. But it's going to be thinner, right? So I need to think about my values. So instead of doing 1, one over, 1 to the side, I have to be three times the distance away. So here's three times the distance away. And then the next number we said had to be 12, right? So I actually think I can graph it on here. So I think it's over here because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 away. Yep. So you can do that. See how much thinner it is? So there you have it. It was flipped over, it became more narrow, and my turning point is now 1, 6 because it moved to the right 1 and up 6 units. 
So that was the hardest one. I did it with you. So here's some other ones that you can go back and try. I'll make sure you can zoom in and see them. Now in these problems, I want you to look at the graph. I'm going to zoom in. And based off of the graph, I want you to write the equation. So you really have to pay attention if it's getting narrow or not, because that'll change your answers. So I'm zooming into all of them so you could see. I'm going to do two examples with you, and then you'll try the rest on your own. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top. I'll do this one. So if I want to take a look here, the first thing I would start is I would start putting some points so I could really see is it being stretched or not. Well, this is in the middle, like this is, it starts in the middle. So this is like saying our number one, one. This is like saying two, one, two, three, four. So it really did one, one, two, four. If I'm sure if I do this next one here as if it was three away from the center, I'm sure if I count up to this point, oops. If I count up to this point, I'll get 9, so 3, 9. So it looks like it was not stretched. Ooh, sorry about that. It looks like it has not been stretched either thinner or wider, uh, either more narrow, narrow or uh, more wider. So that means my A term has not changed. But the only thing I do notice is it has moved to the right. So it moved to the right two units. Okay, so since it moved to the right two units, I need to make sure in my parentheses with the x, I do the opposite of moving to the right. So moving to the right is positive, so really I want minus 2 squared. So if I take a look at that, did it move up or down? No, the only thing is it moved to the right two units. So I'm going to try another one for you. I'm going to take a look here at number 10. So if I took a look at number 10, the first thing that I noticed is that it was upside down. Well, maybe we could just say reflect over the x-axis. Now remember, when it's upside down, that means there's going to be a negative. So automatically, y equals negative. I could do that. Now I also need to check myself. Did it move left or right, up or down? No. But if I take a look at these points... Instead of 1, I'm now at 2. Instead of 4, I'm now at 8. So the thing is everything has been doubled. So because it's narrow and everything has been doubled, that means my A value has to be a 2. Okay. And notice since it did not move left, right, or up or down, I did not change any other values. So if you would like, you can pause the video here, try all these extra other practice problems, and come back and check your work. Okay, so hopefully you were able to complete it. I'll zoom in. I explained as much as I could. I always tried to show the parent function, but again, I told you you don't have to. I think we did two together. What's really important is you're able to explain what happened to the graph. Keep looking on the right-hand side what I explain every time. something you're going to have to get used to. So that you can visualize it and understand. So pause whenever you need to. I tried to be very clear by putting some dots, points on the graph. And there you have it. So I hope you guys have a great day. Welcome to June. If you have any questions, please make sure to message me or email me. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.